Hey Internet, it's RJ. Welcome back. Thanks for tuning into the show today. Now, in today's episode, we are going to be taking a look at Navy Federal Credit Union. So, in typical fashion, we're going to talk a little bit about the credit unions. We don't touch on them much. We'll talk about their full card catalog, how you become a member of both Navy Fed and a credit union as a whole, because it is a little bit different than a bank. We'll take a look at the full card catalog, the points earnings, and we'll come out on the other side with a verdict on these cards. Who are they for and should you consider them? So, if any of that sounds interesting to you, go ahead, press the subscribe button. Let's get to work. Okay, so first things first, let's play a little did you know about Navy Federal Credit Union. So they're headquartered in Virginia. They are incorporated way back when on January 17th, 1933, originally as the Navy Department Employees Credit Union. And obviously over the years, they've since grown and expanded to be more inclusive than just the Navy. And as of the time of recording, Navy Fed is the largest natural membership credit union in the United States by assets and by memberships. Total assets as of March of 2021 was $136.6 billion. Now, before we get into the cards themselves, there are two important things to discuss, and that is eligibility. So we'll talk about eligibility for a credit union and then specifically for Navy Federal Credit Union in case you're unfamiliar with the process. So first up with credit unions, it does work a little bit differently than banks. With banks, really you could get a checking, savings, product, home loan, mortgage, whatever you wanted, credit card, without any actual affiliation to them to start. With a credit union, they do like you to become a member first. So what becoming a member means is normally you've got to put in an application like normal and then you'll end up usually with a share of the credit union, about $5. And that's like a $5 deposit has to remain on deposit at all times and that is what's known as your membership share. That's how you become a member. So once you've done this, then you'd be eligible to apply for all these credit cards that we're going to talk about. So for a quick example here, you can see GTE Financial, which is a credit credit union that I'm a part of. Long story, bank account bonus hunting adventure. Anyways, if you go down to the last account, you can see that member owner share, and that is $5. That's what makes me a member of the credit union. So that's a Cliff Notes version, but when it comes to Navy Fed, there is a different tier of eligibility, as you might have guessed from the name. Becoming a member of Navy Federal Credit Union requires you to have ties to the Armed Forces, Department of Defense, or National Guard, which on the surface sounds limiting. However, the Department of Defense is actually the biggest employer in the United States. So they're defining ties as kind of a wide range. Obviously, if you're currently serving, active military, retired, you have a household member or family member, you're a contractor, things like that. So it's actually pretty inclusive, you know, given the fact that it is Navy Fed and, you know, originally started out for the armed forces. So the housekeeping out of the way, let's start out with the cards and we'll first take a look at the points earnings. These cards are going to earn points or cash back. They're basically the same thing here. It's going to be redeemable for cash back, statement credits, merchandise, and gift cards. Everything that I found leads me to believe you're looking at the classic one cent per point valuation. Now we start out here with the personal cards, and first we have the end reward secured. So no annual fee. Your multipliers are going to be 1x on all purchases, which isn't bad for a secured card. Normally they don't get multipliers. Benefits here, no balance transfer fees and no foreign transaction fees, and these will be staple benefits of all the cards we take a look at. Now, the program itself here is going to ask you to deposit a $200 into a membership savings account. In three months' time, you'll be reviewed to see if you can increase that spending limit, and in six months' time, you'll be reviewed to see if you can become eligible for the Cash Rewards Plus card that we'll talk about in a little bit, and your deposit will be returned to you, which is always nice. Now next up we have the obligatory platinum card. Every card issuer has to have one. Navy Fed is of no exception. No annual fee here. Benefits are going to be no foreign transaction fees, no balance transfer fees. They have a low APR anywhere from 5.9% up to 18%, which as far as credit card rates go, that's not terrible. You are going to get cell phone protection. Moving on to the good stuff here, we have the cash rewards card. So no annual fee. Multipliers here would be a classic 1.5x on all purchases. So this is probably best served as a catch-all card. Benefits here cell phone protection, no foreign transaction fees, and secondary CDW. It's a collision damage waiver for if you're renting a car. Next up, we have the Go Rewards card. So no annual fee, multipliers here, 3x at restaurants, 2x at gas stations, 1x on all other purchases. Benefits here are going to be that cell phone protection and no foreign transaction fees. Moving on to the More Rewards card. Here, this is an American Express issued card, and there is no annual fee. Multipliers here are going to be 3x on restaurants and food delivery services, 3x on supermarkets, 3x at gas and transit, and 1x on all their purchases. Benefits here, again, you've got the no foreign transaction fees and the 25% car rental and rental insurance discount. 
Moving on to their flagship card, the flagship rewards card. I see what you did there, guys. Clever. Annual fee is $49. Multipliers, 3x on travel, 2x on all other purchases. Benefits here, global entry or TSA pre-check credit, which I think this is probably the cheapest you could actually get that global entry credit for at $50. No foreign transaction fee, cell phone protection, travel and emergency assistance, and travel accident insurance. So that's it for the personal cards. Now there is one business card, and this is the GoBiz Rewards card. No annual fee, multipliers here are 1x on all purchases. Now the benefits here are interesting. In addition to the no foreign transaction fees, you also get to choose if you want this to be a Visa card or a MasterCard. And that does change the core benefits of the card. So you'll either be able to get some of those MasterCard benefits or those Visa ones. I'll put those on screen so you can see what you'd be choosing from. But I don't know of another card that actually allows you to choose how it's issued, or what the payment processor is between Visa or MasterCard. So that's a little interesting take there. So at present day, that is a full card catalog for Navy Federal Credit Union. And I have to say, after going through all these, I can see why this is one of the more requested videos because I'm actually pretty impressed by their offerings. And I do want to qualify and give some context to this a little bit. I think when you do these smaller card reviews, we've done PNC, we've done Fifth Third, we've done BBVA, now we're doing Navy Fed. They're pretty small relative to the Bank of America's and the Chase's and the Amex's that we talk about every day. So because of that, you kind of have to apply different context. And the reason I'm impressed here is not so much that these are amazing powerhouse cards, but because I think what Navy Fed's done is sat down and really understood their core customer and their core target demographic in these cards. What do I mean by this? Well, I think it's nice that every single card has no foreign transaction fees. You can see how this would be a very important feature when if you're in the Department of Defense or one of the Armed Forces branches, you could be anywhere in the world and you really don't want to have to worry about racking up those fees, but you still need a card. So any card you choose, no foreign transaction fees. I think that's nice. I think it's also interesting, again, that they go Visa or MasterCard. There is an American Express card, but they go Visa or MasterCard and let you choose on at least that business card because, again, Visa and MasterCard are going to be accepted in more places. Now, American Express has definitely closed that gap considerable amount, so it's probably not that big of an issue as it used to be. But, again, to me, that goes to knowing your target consumer. And then the balance transfer fee piece is also interesting. Normally, even on balance transfer cards where they have this 0% AP, PR for like 16, 18 months, there's still a balance transfer fee of like $5 or 2 or 3%, which as ever is more. But in this case, they're saying, hey, no, there's just no balance transfer fees, period. So I think that's really interesting. And I think that's why I'm most impressed with their card lineup because of how they went through and tried to understand what, what I believe. I'm not necessarily in their target demographics. So I don't want to speak too much to it, but I do think these cards suit the needs of the folks who they are intended for. And again, you have to keep in mind that this is a credit union. Now, this is a national credit union, and credit unions are really usually localized in a community or counties or something like that. So this is a larger credit union, but for a larger credit union still, these are pretty competitive cards. And again, taking a look at the full card lineup, you can quickly identify how you can build a decent setup if you never wanted to leave that Navy Fed ecosystem. Their cash rewards card, the 1.5 is a solid catch-all card. Same with the Go rewards card, a lot of 3x multipliers there. And then the Amex version of that too, the rewards card that they have, the more rewards Awards. I think that's also pretty solid. There's a lot of 3x multipliers there for everyday categories. And in fact, to me, that card reminds me of the City Premier card, which I'm a big fan of, except City Premier is $95 and this one is no annual fee. And it always helps that these cards all have a sign-up bonus or some sort. Now, no, they're not going to set records, but again, that's not really the point here. So, so I think we can sum this one up by saying best that Navy Fed, on the outside looking in, has taken their target demographic and that customer journey into effect. I think if you're part of this ecosystem, part of this credit union, then I would have no issue recommending some of these cards for you. Now, of course, we all know, yes, there are much more competitive cards outside of the walls of this credit union, but you're not going to be doing that badly if you stick with these cards as well. And again, that's usually who these are intended for, folks who just want to stay in one place, have their banking in all one place, and not have multiple accounts and multiple cards. So with all that being said, I was pretty impressed given that context for what Navy Fed had to offer in their catalog. Anyways, guys, if you like this one, drop me a thumbs up down below. If you found it particularly interesting, consider subscribing to the channel, posting content just like this every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Of course, on Sunday, we have that recap episode with all the news you can use in the week that was in the world of credit and finance. My question for you guys is, especially if you are a member of Navy Fed or eligible to be a member and get some of these cards, let me know your opinion on there. Again, I'm not necessarily in the target 
target demographic, but I do want to hear your opinions on there. How on point was I? What do you think about the cards? All that and the rest of it. Anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this one. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll talk to you in the next one. Thank you.